places of high quality natural resources pay through recreation, tourism, they are supportive of an economy. I think there's a lot of evidence that recreation has been as much of an economic input in northern Minnesota as mining or timber harvesting for many years. Well, most all of our guests here come number one to see the Boundary Waters, whether they can travel in it, whether they just drive up to it and look at it, and they experience it. It's an experience that they want to have. People come to see wildlife. They come to see, everybody wants to see a moose. Everybody loves to want to look for a wolf. They want trees, they want quiet, they want the, the serenity of Northwoods, they want to hear the wolf howl in the evening, they want to see the northern lights. They're not here to listen to the drone of the drill and the drone of the heavy equipment going across the shore of the lakes. The financial impact on this industry, on the tourism industry, on recreation, uh, and, uh, and on um, clean air and water, health, um, they are all significant impacts that, uh, that we need to weigh. The mining industry has never really been sustainable in northern Minnesota. It's mechanizing, it's automating, and it's not hiring enough people to maintain healthy communities. Just right over the hill here is the town of Babbitt. Kind of a nice little town, but it's a mining town, and they're, they're running out of money. And this, despite the fact that they have a huge pit right out their back door. That pit is about seven miles long of taconite, and there's still a lot of taconite in there, but they can't maintain a healthy school system on that amount of ore. In addition to the environmental damage that sulfide ore mining possibly presents, I believe there's a possible economic disadvantage that, uh, that worries me as, a, as an ecotourism operator uh, selling trips into a wilderness area that uh, has to be maintained in the image of the public as pristine.